All right, here's the basic setup for a Robinson emulation. Excuse me. All right, now what would be reasonable to have happen here? Well, we have a base and a bunch of alpha carbons, so one reasonable thing is to deprotonate an alpha carbon and turn it into an enolate. Now, the best way to think of it is to we'll start by thinking of this alpha carbon as deprotonating. To first to start with, I'm just going to draw um, a real schematic of the reaction, and then we can go through the whole mechanism. So this is just to give you a, a broad overview. Now, what would this alpha carbon be likely to do now? Attack the beta carbon. Attack this beta carbon because of the resonance form where this has a negative charge. All right, and then we know that ultimately um, that'll put a negative charge on this carbon, which will then protonate. That'll be a normal Michael addition. Okay, so we won't go through the whole mechanism for that. That's just one of the things that are going to happen. We can call this step one, basically. However, something else that can happen is, besides having this alpha carbon attack this molecule, this has an alpha carbon that can also deprotonate. And then what could this alpha carbon do? Attack. Attack this carbonyl. I'm going to put an asterisk on this carbonyl because we have a habit of asterisking carbonyl groups that are acting like electrophiles. So then we can have this attack happening like this. This is our step two, although it's really got a, a bunch of portions. So this is the first part of the Robinson annulation, and this is the second part of the Robinson annulation. Remember that part one is basically a Michael addition. Part one is a Michael addition. And what's the name for part two? What do we call it when an alpha carbon? Aldol. That's right, that's our aldol condensation. So what is a Robinson emulation? It's a Michael addition followed by an aldol condensation. Uh, and uh, it turns out that it's always drawn with the Michael addition first and the aldol condensation second. I'm not quite sure why that is, but that you, you just memorize. The Robinson emulation is first the Michael addition, then the aldol condensation. Uh, and I guess what you get here depends on whether you're under hot or cold conditions. So depending on whether you're under hot or cold conditions, remember we could either have a category one aldol or a category three aldol. Okay, so if you're comfortable with the Michael addition and the aldol condensation, you can put all these steps together to get the product. So uh, we might as well just go through uh, the mechanism for that then. Let's actually just go through the mechanism for these two starting materials. And again, one thing I would really recommend is labeling the alpha carbons that are acting like nucleophiles and asterisking the carbonyl group that's acting like an electrophile. We're not going to asterisk this carbonyl group because it's not acting like an electrophile. Uh, let me point out one other point, too. Um, it's always one alpha carbon attacking one molecule and then the alpha carbon from this molecule attacking the other. We're never going to use two alpha carbons from the same molecule. That's not how this works. And something else to point out, we talked about this briefly in the last problem, the alpha carbon that's going to be attacking here is not this one. It's not the one that was unsaturated to start with. The one that's in good position to attack is this one over here that was never unsaturated. We talked about that before. Uh, in the course of the Michael addition, we're going to form an enolate where this alpha carbon uh, has a negative charge. But it turns out that's not in a great position to, to form a aldol condensation ring. It's this alpha carbon here that was never unsaturated that's going to do the Robinson emulation. All right, so let's try to go through all the steps for that.
keep them green. Yeah, and if we added heat, I'm out of room for drawing the mechanism. So far, we've done it like a category one aldol condensation. Um, if we were going to add heat, how would this picture change? It would become a double bonded. Right, and we have to know where do we put the double bond? Between the alpha and the beta. Yeah, between the alpha and the former carbonyl. So if we added heat, I'm out of room, but if we added heat, it would look like this then it would be a category three aldol condensation where the carbonyl oxygen has been blasted off completely. Carbonyl oxygen has been blasted off completely. Um, so this doesn't even look like a carbonyl anymore over here. 